Hi guys, this is Don. I had a question about how to use the PHSTAT expected monetary value tool. I'm sure the person meant this homework problem. It has to do with a company that's bidding on a predictive modeling project that of course involves uncertainty. Based on their past experience with other projects, they came up with this table that said that they expect three different levels of problems, minimum, typical, and worst case. The project cost for a similar project under the minimum level of problems was 1.25 million, and it had a probability of that type of problem occurring of 0.12 and similar data for the typical and worst case. They also said that they were going to be bidding competitively for the project. Their expectations of winning the bid was of course based on how much they bid. And they gave you a list of potential bid prices and the probability of winning at that bid price ranging from 0% winning the bid if they bid a high bid of 2.25 million down to almost certainty of winning it if they bid a low bid value of 1.65 billion and we wanted to get the expected monetary value for the given bids and from that you can come up with the best bidding decision and we also wanted the expected value of perfect information you can do this building your own decision model and uh, there's a good example of that in the Evans textbook. But we want to use PHSTAT. And remember we go to add-ins. There it goes. PHSTAT, decision-making, expected monetary value. And it brings up this very simple little table. And I think that's what's confusing people. We have to enter at a minimum two pieces of data and that's the number of events and the number of alternative actions and the way I like to remember it is that actions are our decision variables the things we can control and events are the outcomes the things that may occur after we take an action so in this problem the events the outcomes would be if we win the project, what kind of problems are we going to experience? So we have three different events. So I would put three in there. Is And the actions, again, are our decision variables. What can we control? Well, that's our bid price. We've got a number of different bids there, ranging from 2.25 to 1.65. I think that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bid prices. But one of them really doesn't matter because it's got a 0% chance of winning. So there's no sense even in including that in our problem. So that gives us with six bid, bid actions that we can employ. So I would put six in the dialog box and you can name this anything project cost and profit for our problems check the expected opportunity loss that'll give us more information that we need in order to get that expected value of perfect information we don't need the measures of variation for this problem so we click on OK. PHSTAT will create the basics of a spreadsheet. And you can see we've got a table, probabilities and payoffs tables. These are our actions, the six that had any chance of winning, and the events, the three of those. And we need to fill out this table. The blue part, that's the part that we input everything downstream will be calculated and filled out for us. So, let me just give you a sneak peek of 
how I did the problem. And I like to build my spreadsheet in an organized fashion. After I got the pH stat, you know, the basic spreadsheet, I went back and I added in two ta the two tables. One, the events, and I set it up in a vertical fashion to make it more quickly and, and much easier to copy my formulas across. In there, I've got the project cost and the probability, and I calculated the expected project costs. You don't really need that, but that's just the sum product of these costs times their probabilities. And that gives you a, an expected project cost of $1.46 million. I added in a table down at the bottom of my actions, the bids. I've got the, the various bids that have a chance of winning. And they range from 10%, 20%, 30%, 50%, 80%, and 1%. And then with these two tables, I can start to input the information uh, that I need um, in, into the pH stat table. And you can see, I just like to use other information as much as I can. You can just copy those values across. The probabilities, I went ahead and linked those over here to my table so that I could um, use that uh, for other problems in the future if I wanted to. And then you've got to build in uh, the rest of the table. And that gets to be a little bit tricky. Here's my first value, the intersection of a, an action and an outcome. And I want to know what that value is.